Hey there, quirky folks. I am your host, Anna, and now that Black Panther Wakanda Forever has arrived, it is time to talk about its biggest surprise. The ending revealed quite a few surprises, and before I talk about them, I am issuing a spoiler warning right here. Don't go beyond this point if you haven't seen the movie yet. But if you already know the ending, then come along. The first thing that must have come as a surprise to people was M'Baku becoming the new king of Wakanda. Well, I'd say that with most members of the royal family gone, and Shuri being quite inexperienced, M'Baku was the likeliest choice. He deserved to be king because not only is he the strongest human in Wakanda right now, but he also has leadership experience and served the crown in all dire situations. But I must admit that he's only a placeholder king for the next decade or so. It's possible that Shuri might return to rule later on. But the person that M'Baku is really holding the throne for is none other than the son of King Kachala, Toussaint. He was the biggest surprise revealed at the end during the mid credit scene. After Shuri got closure by burning her funeral clothes, Nakia introduced her to her nephew Toussaint. For those wondering, actor Divine Love Konadu san plays young Toussaint. This name is inspired by General Toussaint Louverture, who helped in Haiti's revolution movement back in the late 1790s and early 1800s. But as the kid revealed, Toussaint is just his Haitian name. He is actually named after his father, as he is Prince T'Challa, son of King T'Challa. Apparently, T'Challa and Nakia decided that they'll raise their son outside of Wakanda, away from the pressure of the throne. Nakia must have gotten pregnant about a month or two before Thanos' snap. That's when she and T'Challa would have had this conversation. And right as the snap wiped T'Challa out of existence, Nakia would have made a conscious choice to raise her child outside Wakanda and Haiti, just as she and T'Challa decided. So, young Prince T'Challa must have been born in late 2018 or in the first month of 2019. Considering the timing of Infinity War, it couldn't have been any later than that. And since Black Panther Wakanda Forever is set to take place sometime around 2025, the young prince would be around six and a half years old. He is the true heir to the throne and could later return to Wakanda as he grows up. But before we talk about his future in the MCU, let's see if he has any comic book background. Well, it is known that in the comics, T'Challa from Earth-616 doesn't really have a son. So keeping that in mind, Tessai is an original character created by Ryan Coogler and co. within the MCU. He comes as a tribute to King T'Challa and even Chadwick Boseman, as that's how Coogler decided to continue his legacy organically. But it's worth noting that Tessai does have some relation to the Marvel Comics multiverse. Different versions of T'Challa's children from the multiverse have appeared in the comics, but the one that's known to the readers most is Azari T'Challa. Although, there's something very interesting about him, as even he didn't originate from the comics. His first appearance was in an animated film called Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow, which came out in 2008. It was set in an apocalyptic future where the Avengers were killed by Ultron. So, their children were left behind and one of them was Azari. He and his superpowered teammates were mentored by Tony Stark and they stopped Ultron together. Then he made his comic book debut in 2010's Avengers issue number one. And Azari T'Challa is very different from MCU's Prince T'Challa, as he is actually a mutant. He inherited his agility and strength from his father T'Challa and his electricity powers from his mother Storm. But here in the MCU, Prince T'Challa might only have super strength and high intellect. In fact, we can't even be sure about super strength just yet. But we can be sure that when he grows of age, Nakia will definitely pass on her espionage knowledge to him and train him as a fighter. Till then, he would be allowed to have a normal childhood because that's what King T'Challa wanted for him. So for those thinking of him as a Young Avengers prospect, I'd say that you shouldn't. The Young Avengers already have more than 10 candidates. And as I mentioned, Prince T'Challa is just six and a half years old right now. So it is highly likely that he is Marvel's investment for stories that will be told about 10 to 12 years down the line in the 2030s. Maybe he could become relevant a little earlier if there is another time jump involved. But like Morgan Stark, he'd probably come into play much later. Once he grows of age, he could go and challenge M'Baku or his successor for the Wakandan throne. And he could get the mantle of Black Panther from his auntie Shuri. But I guess it won't be before that. Although if you think about it, there are a couple of ways Marvel could turn Prince T'Challa into the Black Panther much sooner. In the upcoming Secret Wars event, a variant of Prince T'Challa who is Black Panther in an alternate universe could come into play or maybe an older Prince T'Challa from Earth-616's future. He could travel back to his past in order to warn people about an incoming threat in the present day. Apart from these two ways, Toussaint only acts as a tribute for now. But he could become an investment for the stories told in the distant future. Okay, that's all for now. What were your thoughts upon Prince T'Challa's introduction? And how do you think Marvel will use him? Let us know in the comments and do click on those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed our analysis. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one.